from a bridge hitting vessel to one that hit a waterfront mansion, here are 15 ship launches that went horribly wrong. Number 15. Cruise ship crashes into Wenzhou Bridge. In 2012, the captain of the luxury cruise ship Pearl No. 7 had a lot of explaining to do when it crashed into a bridge in Wenzhou in the Zhejiang province of eastern China. The brand new cruise ship, which was the first unpowered luxury vessel used as a floating hotel, had only been launched at a shipyard the previous day. Given that it was worth 44.24 million bucks, it was a costly mistake for its owner, Wenzhou Round City Expressway Company Limited, that the Maritime Safety Department looked into thoroughly. The seven-story, 518-foot ship caused the bridge to sway, and it also damaged its chimneys. Fortunately, no one was injured, and traffic flow had not been affected. Even with all that damage, though, it's hard to deny just how elegant this ship is. It can carry up to 1,000 passengers and weighs 8,600 tons. It's also 108 feet tall, which maybe the captain didn't realize, and 98 feet wide. After the failed launch, the ship was removed from the Weijiang River and was gonna be back in action by October 1st of that same year as previously planned. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Ship Sinks at Launch. Imagine spending months building the most magnificent ship, only for it to be destroyed before it even gets a chance to sail. That was the reality for the captain and workers of the SS Principessa Jolanda, an Italian transatlantic ocean liner. The ship was built in 1907 by Cantiere Navale de Riva Tregoso, destined for the shipping company Navigazione Generale Italiana. It was named after King Victor Emmanuel III's daughter, Princess Iolanda Margarita di Savoia. The ship was a thing of beauty. It weighed 9,210 tons, measured 463 feet long, and was the largest passenger ship crafted in Italy at that time. It also cost around 6 million lire to build, which is around 800,000 US dollars then, and 22 million US dollars today. It was a genuine Italian luxury liner, and it was even one of the first vessels of its kind to have Marconi wireless telegraphy, telephones in the cabins, and electric lighting so it was even more heartbreaking to know it never got to be enjoyed. On September 22nd, 1907, a broad audience gathered to watch it launch. When it traveled down the slipway, it became unstable. Tugboats and workers were unsuccessful in correcting the problem, and it began taking on water. Within an hour, only a few feet of the ship were still seen above water, and all but the engine was unsalvageable. Fortunately, there were no casualties. Number 13. Symphony Provider Stuck on Slipway Shipbuilders must always get a little nervous when they arrange large gatherings of people to attend their launches. So much can go wrong. And you never know whether it's going to end up all over the news for the right reasons. While this situation involving the symphony provider could have been a lot worse, it could also have been much better. During the launch of this ship at the Ferris Smith shipyard, which is near Lear in Germany, the bow got stuck on the slipway. As a result, the stern starts to move away. Footage during the launch showed that possibly hydraulic pins that hold the bow could be to blame. They are manually released so that the ship can make it safely into the water. Fortunately, the ship did make it into the water without further incident. Still, this minor hiccup certainly wasn't mentioned in the Ferris Smith press release later. The ship was one of two EcoBox DP2 vessels destined for symphony shipping. They had a large cargo loading area, a deck house on the force ship, two cranes, and all kinds of exciting technology to make the ship sustainable and better suited to all sea conditions. Number 12. Ship launch at Marinette, Wisconsin goes wrong. If you're looking for video footage of how not to launch a ship, then just take a look at YouTube footage uploaded by Jason Bundoff of a failed ship launch at Marinette Shipyard in Wisconsin in 2013. 
According to some comments, the person taking the footage of the ship being launched was an intern at the shipyard. As the ship was being launched, a massive amount of debris came flying at the camera, followed by an enormous wave. Fortunately, the cameraman only sustained minor cuts and bruises. However, there were other injuries at the shipyard, and one person even broke their leg. What seems to go wrong is, as the ship is sliding into the water, the sliders being used to guide it don't extend as far as they possibly should. Part of the dock equipment breaks off in the process, and the ship is plunged into the water, which sends debris flying. Fortunately for the shipbuilder, it lands in the water just fine. All's well that ends well. There'd be a bit of a cleanup job and maybe a few apologies to those who sustained injuries in all the chaos. Number 11. Ship Accident During Launch in New Orleans Footage of the U.S. Coast Guard's newest icebreaker being launched in New Orleans in 2015 doesn't look all that terrifying. It navigates off the slipway into the water, sends a wave toward the docks, and then sits up in the water how it should. But even though it doesn't look like a ship launch that's gone wrong, it really did go wrong. At least for some spectators. As the ship slips off the slipway, it lands in the water with a massive crash. The waves cause timber and water to spray over various spectators who had been watching from nearby. Some people were hit with a mixture of water and oil, and they were the lucky ones. Some people got hit with timber and debris with surprising force. Many onlookers left the ship launch battered and bruised, and one person even suffered a broken leg. The people in charge of christening the ship were able to do so from a high vantage point, which put them in a desirable position, but many others weren't so lucky. Around 20 people sustained injuries. Number 10. Russian cargo ship crashes into South Korean bridge. Even though this isn't technically a ship launch, it is definitely a shipping failure. That much is for sure. The Russian cargo ship, the 370-foot Sea Grand, was in Busan, South Korea, heading for Vladivostok, Russia, which is its home port. At the time, it was carrying around 3 million pounds of steel coils. Instead of sailing north along the coast and navigating its way along the Sea of Japan's eastern edge, it started heading to a small bay, and directly for the Gwangin Bridge. It is the second largest double-deck structure in the country. Ship tracking KCG officials had radioed the ship to turn around, but the captain may not have understood or spoken English well enough. Eventually, the captain tries to reverse, only for the ship to collide with the bridge anyway. It took out the foremast and created a massive hole in the underside of the bridge. But the captain continued to dig a hole for himself. Rather than staying put and letting authorities take care of the situation, he fled the scene in the ship. Patrol boats intercepted it and breathalyzed the captain, who returned a rating of 0.086. The legal limit is 0.03. Number 9. Ferry crashes into Santo Domingo port. On arrival from San Juan in Puerto Rico in 2017, the Kaidan Ferry was involved in a collision at the Santo Domingo port in the Dominican Republic Caribbean. If that's not an arrival that gets you noticed, we don't know what is. Authorities say that one of the moorings secured to the docks of the pier had broken, which caused the impact. The ferry crashed into some containers, causing damage, along with port damage and perimeter gate infrastructure damage. According to port authorities, no one was injured in the ferry crash, and they had the situation quickly under control. The ship's operator, owner, and local port authorities had launched an investigation into what went wrong. Fortunately, there wasn't a lot of damage to the ferry, and only the ramp appears to have suffered some damage. There also didn't seem to be any breaches, so no water had flowed into the ferry either. Given the sound of the containers crunching against the ferry, that's quite surprising. It goes to show just how well made these ships really are. Well, with a few exceptions like the Titanic, of course. Number 8. Ship Crashes Into Waterfront Mansion Out of all things to crash into when your ship malfunctions, the last thing you want it to be is a million dollar mansion. Unfortunately for one captain and his crew in 2018, that was the case. 
The Maltese bulk carrier vessel called Vita Spirit suffered a malfunction while traveling through the busy Bosporus Strait waterway in Istanbul. The malfunction caused the rudder to become disabled and the captain lost control of the ship. Instead of coming to a safe stop in the water, it ended up crashing into a historic mansion built in the 18th century. For many years, it had been used for concerts, weddings, and similar events. Fortunately, no one was injured and there were no environmental threats either. Because of the significant amount of damage to the mansion, though, the owners of it demanded prosecution against the people in charge of maritime traffic. Footage from inside a dining area shows staff members and guests running out of the dining area as the ship appears to come straight for them. Water then flows over the outdoor eating area. Well, they won't be forgetting that close encounter in a hurry. Number 7. Ship Launch Wave Fail while this isn't a ship launch that went horribly wrong for the ship, it certainly did for those who went to see it be launched. Launching a new ship for the first time is quite a big deal. Big crowds gather and there are many traditions to welcome good luck. For example, a bottle of champagne is often broken over the ship's bow, then it's named aloud and launched. Most ships are launched stern first, but the shoreline doesn't always allow it. So in the case of this ship, Wagenborg, and many others like it, they are launched sideways. Number 6. Christening and Launch of Reuben Lasker the ship launch and christening of the fishery survey vessel Reuben Lasker didn't go horribly wrong, but it was certainly impressive to watch. And since it was a side launch, it could even look like it didn't go to plan, even if it did. The Marinette Marine Corporation, which is a Fincantieri company, was responsible for the launch of the vessel from the Wisconsin shipyard that was being built for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. The 208-foot ship was named after the sponsor's mother, and it was launched sideways into the Menominee River with an unbelievable splash. Not only was the launch an exciting occasion for how many waves it created, but for what the ship's launch actually meant. It would allow the NOAA to collect information about ocean health and fish stocks to support fishing jobs and coastal communities in the future. The ship would also be operated and maintained by the NOAA's Office of Marine and Aviation Operations. It has all the best navigation systems, scientific sampling gear, and oceanographic research equipment for use around the U.S. West Coast and Eastern Tropical Pacific Ocean. Number 5. NYC Ferry Crash Sometimes the launching of ships goes wrong, but bringing vessels into the pier can also go wrong. The MV Andrew J. Barberi, a Barberi-class ferry, is proof of that. This particular ferry, which forms part of the Staten Island ferry system from Manhattan and Staten Island in New York City, has had a run of bad luck. It was introduced in 1981 and has had two serious incidents, one in 2003 and one in 2010. The 2003 incident caused the deaths of 11 people, while 37 people were injured in 2010. The collision in 2003 involved the ferry approaching Staten Island only for it to show no signs of slowing down, which caused it to slam sideways into the pier. Given that it can carry up to 6,000 people, it would have been quite a horrific accident. In findings released in 2005 by the National Transportation Safety Board, the probable cause was the assistant pilot's unexplained sudden incapacitation. The master then failed to maintain command and control of his vessel. 60 Minutes discovered that the assistant pilot had been short on sleep, and then he admitted he had passed out in the ship's pilot house on pain medication. Number 4. Carnival Cruise Line Crash In 2019, two Carnival cruise ships, the Carnival Glory and Carnival Legend, were involved in a collision at a port in Cozumel, Mexico. Thankfully, only one person sustained minor injuries. It is thought that high winds may have been a factor. Carnival Glory had been trying to dock, and Carnival Legend was already docked. The cruise line described the collision as an elision, which is a nautical term to describe a moving ship colliding with a docked ship. Guests were evacuated from the dining room on the third and fourth deck, but damage to each cruise ship was kept to a minimum. 
The itinerary of both cruise liners was also not affected by the incident. According to passengers, the collision wasn't as nasty as it seemed to outsiders. They had felt a lot of movement on the water throughout their journey, so to them, it just seemed like another big wave hitting the ship. An onboard announcement after the collision said that currents had caused the crash, which led the wave for high winds to be a contributing factor as well. Number 3. MSC Armonia Cruise Ship Hits Honduras Dock In 2018, visitors and locals were in for quite a fright when the MSC Armonia cruise ship crashed into a corner of a pier, crumbling it in the process. The vessel had been coming into the Isla Roden Honduras port at around 9 a.m. on April 11th when it didn't quite nail the angle correctly. Onlookers started videoing what was happening and noted how at the angle the ship was at, it was headed for a crash. Sure enough, it grazed right into the pier, sending debris hurtling into the water. Fortunately, wooden piers are no match for giant hunks of steel. The ship suffered minimal damage, and all those passengers and crew on board were able to disembark safely. There also appeared to be no environmental impact from the collision either. The Honduran Port State Control cleared the cruise ship to leave the port after minor repairs before it continued onto its next port of call, Belize. Here's hoping it managed to navigate its way into that port safely. After the event, the board of directors of Port of Roten was in the process of arranging repairs with the cruise line company. The most important priority at the time, though, was making sure they could restore normal operations. Number 1. Rope Snaps During Scott Explorer's Launch when you put your blood, sweat, and tears into a project as large as a ship, it can be quite heartbreaking to watch something go wrong. While the damage to this ship, the Scott Explorer, could have been a lot worse, it also didn't need to happen at all. The Scott Explorer was getting launched for the first time at the Royal Baudu shipyard in Hugazond, the Netherlands. Everything was going to plan, and the workers had done this plenty of times before. They prepared the ship for the launch, removed everything that was placed underneath it, and sliders were used to shift the vessel sideways into the water for the first time. wouldn't be long until that fresh new paint job was looking anything but new. As the ship hit the water, one of the lines at its stern snapped, which meant the ship was no longer in control. It moved with the tide to the quay wall, where it ground up against it several times. Not only did the ship suffer a lot of scrapes and paint damage, but the quay wall looked worse for wear as well. It was a less than ideal ending to what would have been a successful ship launch. Most ships are going to encounter a lot of rough seas, but the launch of one is always the most pressure it will likely ever be put under. So a lot can go horribly wrong. Have you been to the launching of a ship in person? Did anything go wrong? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.